We are back at 8.09, and this morning on today's family, when little boys want to dress like little girls. One mom's decision to share her experience with her son is receiving a lot of attention. We're going to talk to them both in just a moment, but first, their story. I'm a princess boy, and I love wearing dresses, and I love the colors of pink and red. I'm a princess in a castle. For little Dyson, now five, this is part of his everyday play. But for his mom, Cheryl Killa Davis, it took some getting used to. My initial reaction was to redirect, play with the truck or read certain books. When Dyson wanted to be a princess for Halloween, Cheryl initially resisted, but soon changed her mind. My older son, Toby, said, Mom, why can't you just let him be happy? And at that moment, I knew that this was more my issue. If Toby could be a ninja, why couldn't he be a princess? Since then, they've allowed their youngest son to explore his interest in all things dressy and sparkly. He's not contagious. He's just a, like any other kid. He plays checkers, he plays in the trees. He just likes to do it in a dress, big deal. He likes pretty things. Pink is his favorite color. The experience led Cheryl to self-publish a book, My Princess Boy, which he wrote as a tool to encourage acceptance of Dyson and his dresses. A store clerk once said to me, are you really gonna buy that for him? And I said, can you just read this book for 60 seconds? And after she read it, she apologized. Word spread, their story appeared on a local TV talk show and in People magazine. Soon a major publisher picked up My Princess Boy, which landed in bookstores across the country just before Christmas. I think it's fantastic, and I think that what it tells us is that these boys, their parents, and the social world is no longer the same. There is an audience for this book, um, and there are people who need this kind of information and this kind of help. I haven't had that moment of regret yet. Partly that I think is because of all of the people who are emailing me from all over the country and all over the internationally as well um, who are saying I'm so glad I'm not alone. And Cheryl Killa Davis, author of My Princess Boy, is here with her princess boy, her son Dyson. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Dyson, you came up with that name Princess Boy. Is that, that's how you see yourself, right? As a princess boy? Mm -hmm. And you picked out your outfit today. Yeah. Tell me about the outfit, because I know you love pink and purple. You want to show your outfit? Can we see? Stand up. And this is your twirly outfit, right? Can you show see. me the twirl? <laughs> <laughs> and I know that, that Dyson has loved dressing up since he was two years old. Yes. And that's been a, a journey for you since then. He's now just five, five in October. Yeah. The book started out as something that you self-published, published, really started out as a journal. Yes. You're exploring um, more about you almost than Dyson and, and dealing with a child who is different from other kids. Yeah. When I first uh, realized and went through the process of this and my older son says, why can't you just let him be happy? I realized this is really an adult issue. It's my issue and how am I going to deal with it? And so through journaling, I needed a tool to hand to people to say, I don't want you to crush my son's spirit. He's too young and he's really strong with loving what he loves. And so I just didn't, I didn't want that to happen. None of us do as moms. And then that's why you self-published the book. And then to have a major publisher take it on, did you ever anticipate anything like that? I did not anticipate that. One of the things that you do when you hold in secrets for so long is you think it's only you. And the moment that we went on um, our local NBC show, New Day Northwest, with Margaret Larson, we literally had, in, within 24 hours, we had over 2,000 people emailing. It was posted on YouTube, all from us just posting the segment to say, please accept us. And now that the book is in bookstores, what has the reaction been like? Have you seen it firsthand at all? I have. Um, I'm so happy that Simon & Schuster stepped up because it really allows it, the book to be there for people who want and need it. And the first experience when it first came out, I was in the bookstore in Seattle and a dad and a son, they were there and the son was thumbing through the book and I was just kind of peeking around the side and the son smiled up, looked up to his dad and his dad smiled at him. And then they went to the checkout line and it just, it touched my heart because it just showed that, you know, this little boy was really attached to this and the father just smiled and said, I'm with you, son, let's go. Dyson, why do you like to dress up in, in dresses and in pretty colors and sparkly things? 
Because it makes me feel happy. It makes you feel happy. <laughs> Do you know other princess boys? Mm-hmm. Are they friends of yours or people that you've met along the way? People that I've met along the way. Yeah. And when people see you dressed up, honey, are most people nice? Has there ever been anybody that's made you feel bad about dressing up? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Jason's had a really good response with people that might say you're not supposed to be in a dress or only girls are supposed to wear pink. And he says, you don't, if you don't like me in a dress or in pink, then you're not my friend. And there's something that we can learn from some of that is just let's get to a place of acceptance. But I know when you first wrote the book, um, you included a letter to your family and friends with, yeah. because you were having trouble with this, you were struggling with it, and you wrote, I had independent values, deep cultural and religious perceptions of how my sons as males should look and behave. This became a journey in self-awareness and reevaluation of stereotypes and perceptions of what I thought I believed. Now, if it was hard for you, what kind of a struggle would it be for people who don't have a princess boy in their life? You know, we've gotten a lot of responses from people who don't have children, who don't have princess boys. Really, princess boys, the book stands for hope, and it stands for acceptance. And in 2010, with, in light of all this bullying and, and things that have happened and the unthinkable outcomes of children taking their lives just for being different, this is our chance to say 2011 is going to be about the year of acceptance. We are going to turn this around. And it takes the first step to go to acceptance. And then we can start to get into inclusion. And as sooner or later, my hope is that the world will embrace the uniqueness that is really within all of us. What about people, Cheryl, who might say to you, you know, it's great to let Tyson be himself at home or maybe at a friend's house, but in public, there's a different set of rules. And, and if he loved running around the house naked, like a lot of little kids do, you wouldn't let him do it at school, for example. Yeah, I do. You know, I believe that um, those are kind of health and social issues. And this is clothing. This is attire, and children at a very young age, studies show that one of the first independent things that they feel proud of and get self-confidence in is selecting their clothes and dressing themselves for school. We've all seen the child in the school with polka dots and stripes and different colors and mismatching shoes, okay, and sometimes that's not the battle you want to fight. And as my son gets older mm -hmm. and our family <laughs> continues to grow, he's able to express his own interests. And so I figured I can't keep it inside of the house, so we need to get the world to a place of acceptance. And as a, as a mom of teenagers, I know if I had talked about them as little kids, they would be upset now as teenagers. Do you worry about that with Dyson, that there will come a time when he's embarrassed about this, that you put this out? We talk about that, don't we, Dyson? Yeah? We, as a family, we're very, very honest and open, and we have family meetings. We discuss what this really means. He knows that boys aren't normally dressing in dresses right now. Um, and so he, he really has been kind of a driver and part of it. Um, the book doesn't have faces. It also doesn't have Dyson's name in it. So my hope is that the book can continue on through the years to come. And in 15 to 20 years, he can say, I'm really proud that my parents loved and supported me as a child. Are you proud now that mom wrote the book, Dice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if people reading it, do you think if they had any questions about you wearing a dress or a tutu or whatever, they would understand after reading the book? What would they understand? What would they understand about you? They would understand that it's like to wear dresses. That it's fun to wear dresses? Do you want to give us a little twirl before Let's we go? Let's see how it goes. <laughs> thank you very much, Dyson. Nice to have you here, Cheryl. Thank you so much. For thank the you very Good much. Good luck with the book and, thank you. and helping people to, thank you. to gain acceptance and understanding. That's an important thing. It is. Thank it is. You. We need it. The book is called My Princess Boy, Cheryl and Dyson Killer Davis. I pledge to be a servant to our president and all mankind because, because together, together we can, together we are, and together, together we will be the change that we seek.